morning, Manchester High School. It is Friday, and welcome to the June 8th edition of The Pulse. I'm Jake Bullock. And I'm Ben Mashinsky. Thank you so much for joining us. For those who don't know, we're the Period 6 directors of The Pulse. This school year, we worked alongside the Period 7 directors, David Mazzotta and Kyle Smith, to make sure the stories we were giving you were polished, relevant, and above all, newsworthy. And since this is our last episode of the year, we figured we'd take over this time. This week, we'll take a look at the 2018 Manchester Citizen of the Year and what exactly qualified him for this award. Later, we'll travel to Main Street to highlight a long-standing tradition in the Manchester community. And finally, we'll look back at all the exciting things that went down right here at MHS. All this and much more coming up. You're watching The, the Pulse. Pulse. As the school year comes to a close, students are encouraged to finish the year strong, but some ended up going above and beyond. One junior taking this message into strong consideration was recently recognized with the 2018 Governor Scholar Award at the AquaTurf. Chris Pagano has the story. Matthew Barnwell, hey, I guess you guys call him Barney, is not only the current valedictorian in the class of 2019, he is also a skilled baseball player and an extremely likable person as well. He'll bring the same dedication that he would, you know, in school to the baseball field or, you know, to helping out his friends in their time of need. According to his father, Matthew Barnwell III, Barney has always been gifted in maintaining balance in his life. I think it's really important to be not only a smart kid, but a social kid. Being able to have friends, play sports, and then balance that with school. He has also obtained a phenomenal work ethic. He's hard working, like he knows how to pri you know, prioritize not only his work, but his sports and his relaxing time and his video time, but he knows how to put it all together. Matt Barnwell was just recently awarded the Governor's Scholar at the AquaTurf last week. This award speaks volumes to Matt's character, says Miss Osterman. You know, it's in his ability to be proactive on top of that um, and not fall behind, it's, it's, he's just an impressive kid. Uh, getting the Governor Scholar Award is pretty cool. It just was kind of like recognition that like all the hard work that I put in like throughout all of my high school career is like finally paying off. While winning awards for his work in the classroom, Matt also dedicates a lot of his time to the baseball field. Well, it's not easy, but it just requires like time management and like a little bit of patience too. Just making sure that like I have all my priorities straight. I think that says that he works harder than a lot of kids at school and he takes his priorities really seriously um, and he has a goal that he sets and you know he stays true to that. On scene here at Matt Barnwell from Manchester this has been Chris Pagano reporting. We know Barney well and he's a down-to-earth guy. It's great to see a student like him succeed with such recognition while still remaining humble among his peers. Matt is a great addition to our broadcast journalism team and luckily he'll be one of the directors of next year's program. Well, with the preparation of next year's Pulse already in swing, we can't forget to reflect on the many great things that this year's Pulse crew has accomplished. Let's take a look. Adam Diebolt has been in broadcast for the past two years and has contributed greatly at STN in Nashville, Tennessee. Adam is funny. He will be moving on to Eastern Connecticut State University to pursue his career in communications. Not only has Adam reported on countless news stories like The Insider, but he is also an anchor for Red Sports Talk. From the Pulse, this has been Adam Diebolt reporting. Jake Bolduck, Period 6 co-director for the Pulse, has been in broadcast for the past three years. I can always go to Jake for help. Jake has made a large impact on the program with his on and off camera talent. His leadership and humorous personality is going to be missed next fall. From the Pulse, this has been Jake Bolduck reporting. Nathan! Lauren Diana will be attending the University of California, majoring in TV, film, and media studies. Lauren is a co-director of Red Productions and a Live for Five anchor through her three years here in broadcast. Lauren Diana is someone that will always put a smile on your face. She has given countless hours of hard work and dedication to her stories and is always willing to give a helping hand to her classmates. Lauren always brings her best foot forward to her stories and she will truly be missed here at The Pulse. From 867 Main Street in Manchester, I'm Lauren Diana reporting. Delaney Faulkner. Joined The Pulse this year, but was a co-anchor at the STN competition in Nashville and has been an anchor for The Pulse all year long. 
Delaney is known for her on-air talent, but also brings her unique writing skills to her story groups. Delaney's unique. I love how she's her own person. Known as Falcon around the broadcast wing, her consistency to make her stories the best will be missed as she takes a gap year to travel prior to attending Goldsmiths in London. And I'm Delaney Faulkner. Thank you so much for joining us. Rainiel Fuentes who spent his past three years here at The Pulse, brought his creative perspective to the broadcast family. Raniel's a savage. With a different perspective on broadcast, Raniel has introduced the program to a more innovative way of producing stories. His hard work and dedication to The Pulse will be greatly missed next year. From Manchester, this has been Raniel Fuentes reporting. David Mazada is a Period 7 co-director and is also a three-year veteran here at The Pulse. David Mazada is helpful. His amazing editing and After Effects skills are going to be missed as he departs from the Pulse. This has been David Mazzotta reporting. Chris Pagano, a Live for Five anchor and a Pulse reporter. Chris brought his talent on and off the camera with his unique editing and leadership skills. Chris is really hardworking. Chris brought home third place for lead story at the STN convention in Anaheim, California. The Pulse will not be the same without Chris as he moves on to ECSU to continue his communication career. From Manchester, this has been Chris Pagano reporting. Zach LaPlante has been at The Pulse for the past two years. Zach also has been a member of the Red Production for the past three years. Zach is cool. You can always find Zach in the broadcast wing, working either on his story or helping Mr. Larson with a specific task. Zach has made substantial impact on The Pulse, and without him next fall, there will be a big gap to fill. From The Pulse, this has been Zach LaPlante reporting. Jacob Grzywinski, also known as The Grizz, is his three-year veteran here at The Pulse. We have seen him grow not only height-wise, but in his broadcast skills as well. Jacob was really kind and helpful. From being a member for Red Production for the past four years, next year won't be the same without his happy personality. From The Pulse and CCSU, this has been Jacob Grzywinski reporting. Kyle Smith, a Period 7 co-director and a three-year veteran here at The Pulse, his leadership really showed up at STN this year. Kyle, along with his partners, brought home first place for Best Feature Story. Kyle Smith is devoted. Kyle is also a director for Live for Five. As he moves on to ECSU, his leadership and director skills will never be forgotten. From The Pulse, this has been Kyle Smith reporting. Ben Machinsky, a Period 6 co-director and a three-year veteran here at The Pulse. His dedication and work ethic towards each program each and every week is admirable. Ben is very kind. Ben is a member of not only The Pulse, but for Live for Five as well. His talent and leadership really showed up at the STN convention in Nashville as his partners and himself brought home first place for their individual competition. From The Pulse, this is Ben Mishinsky reporting. Johnnea Thornton Bay is a two-year veteran here at The Pulse. Johnnea reported on countless stories and was also an anchor for The Pulse multiple times last year. Johnnea is so funny. It won't be the same without her great and funny personality here in room From the Pulse, this has been next Jake Barabee reporting. From the Pulse, this has been John A. Thornberry reporting. Jake Barabee joined the Pulse family this year. His hard work helped him become a successful reporter and an even better Red Sports talk anchor. Jake Barabee is inclusive. Jake's hard work and dedication showed up as he got an honorable mention for his individual competition. Jake's hard work will be greatly missed next year. From The Pulse, this has been Jake Barabee reporting. Lauren Packer, a constant anchor for The Pulse, also brought her interesting perspective to her news stories each week. Lauren also reported at the STN convention in Nashville. Lauren Packer is a really good friend of mine that I'm going to miss very much. It won't be the same without Pac-Man here in the broadcast wing. From Nashville, this has been Lauren Packer reporting. Ryan Stewart will be attending Eastern Connecticut State University and will be pursuing a career in communications. Ryan, also known as Stu, practically lives in the broadcast wing. He was a co-anchor at the Student Television Network competition in Nashville. I think Ryan is cool and awesome. He always had my back. Ryan is very skilled on and off the camera and is always willing to help his classmates with their stories. He has been a part of the broadcast family for the past three years and his talents in anchoring and reporting will truly be missed. From the Pulse, this has been Ryan Stewart reporting. Being a director for The Pulse was a huge honor, and I'm really fortunate for this experience. The school year went by way too fast. Yeah, from the renovation of our studio to the awards we received at STN, we've come a long way since September. But we can't forget that none of this would have been possible without Mr. Larson. And now the Elks Club has just recently named him the 2018 Manchester Citizen of the Year. Ryan Stewart takes a deeper look into the meaning behind this award and what exactly Mr. Larson has done to earn this title. 
Gordon Bittner Hinckley, an American religious leader and author, once said, Every good citizen adds to the strength of a nation. One person who adds strength to the Manchester community is Mr. Eric Larson, who has recently been named Citizen of the Year by the Elks Club. People around Manchester mostly know Eric for being a father and a communications teacher at Manchester High School. But for co-worker Ryan Jones, he is more than that. Mr. Larson works um, as a volunteer coach for the Manchester Little League. Um, he's a parent volunteer for the Boy Scouts. Um, and quite honestly, um, he's the kind of guy that anyone in town can call and ask for a favor and he's right there. So um, he's very involved with the Manchester Road Race um, and helping to coordinate the Little Manchester Road Race. He does all the announcing. Um, he works with um, kind of the Road Race Committee to get that, that situated and done. So um, he's kind of very active behind the scenes in a lot of what he does. One thing that makes Mr. Larson special is connections with current and past students. For alumni Jenna Kelly, she says that Mr. Larson is. He's like a second father to me. We always joked around, but like we always also got work done. And he always like inspired me to do my best and I just miss him a lot. Mr. Larson wasn't just a teacher to me, he was also a friend. Um, he really helped me with my college decision too. He was a big influence on why I went where I went and he also just helped me throughout high school to make the right decisions. And for current students, David Mazada and Kyle Smith, they couldn't imagine what broadcast journalism would be like without Mr. Larson. Mr. Larson is really inspiring. Um, he helps kind of guide us in the right direction and he helps us really explore our own talents. And because of him, he's pushed me to work harder and kind of improve this program. And he kind of lets the students do it, but at the same time, he encourages students to always get better. Larson probably taught me the most about like real world stuff and like stuff that I, that I want to know about in broadcast. So I think he was the most influential teacher for me. To be a good citizen like Mr. Larson, you have to be able to put yourself in other people's shoes and see the bigger picture. For the last time from Manchester, this has been Ryan Stewart reporting. We would like to thank Mr. Larson and Mr. Jones for their many years of dedication to our program. Without these gentlemen, none of this would have been possible. We're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we'll highlight a very unique event happening right here in Manchester. Stay with us. Monday, June 11th is an all, all day where it will run periods 1, 3, 5, and 7. Good. Tuesday, June 12th, it's an even day where it will run periods 2, 4, 6, 8. Monday, June 11th, is an all, all day where it will run periods 1, 3, 5, and 7. That's good. Thursday, June 14th, is an even day where it will run periods 2, 4, 6, 8. Eight. June 15th will be a makeup day for all seniors who miss a exam. Good luck to all seniors and students who are on their exams from, from the public. This has been Kyle Pound reporting. Yee yee! For the past 27 years, Manchester has dedicated one week out of the year to celebrate this town's heritage, past, present, and future. Having started this past Sunday, the town has already hosted many events, including the Senior Dance, Art in the Park, and Imagine Main Street. Lauren Packer takes us downtown to highlight another very important event of Pride in Manchester, the Concert in the Park. On Sunday, June 3rd, from 6 to 9 p.m., the town of Manchester held the 27th annual Concert in the Park. The Shaded Soul Band performed Sunday night. The Connecticut-based performers almost all genres of music spanning from various decades such as the 50s, 80s, and today's top hits. Besides the high-energy music, there was Ben & Jerry's ice cream, airbrush tattoos, and art in the park. This event brings the community together. A night full of fun, music, family, and friends helps to bring the community together here at Center Park. From Pride in Manchester, and for the last time, this has been Lauren Packer reporting. Pride in Manchester looks like a lot of fun. I'm definitely going to have to check it out. Well, there's only a few days left. The celebration ends June 10th. Go to prideinmanchester.townofmanchester.org to see the rest of the events for the week. Times like these can make you realize how Manchester is focused on honoring its diversity, especially within our schools. At MHS alone, there's so much diversity. 
That is why it's so important for our students and staff to learn to respect and honor the differences of people in our school. This year, MHS faculty introduced the very first gender neutral bathroom to our student body. Michael Christie gathered thoughts around the school from the students about the benefits of inclusiveness. Located downstairs in the Spanish hallway is a bathroom not many are used to seeing. This year, the town of Manchester installed its first gender neutral bathroom in order to secure safety for students, teachers, and staff who don't identify with a specific gender. Everyone, you know, deserves to feel safe and comfortable and um, well represented. And this, I think, provides that feeling for a lot of people who aren't always able to be visible about that also. The town is making its first steps of many to ensure equality, not just for people who don't identify with the gender, but for all minorities. Teachers like Mr. DeSantis are thrilled that the administration have made such adjustments here at MHS. Uh, so having a separate place that says, you know what, whoever you are, this is, this is the bathroom for you, I think makes people feel safe. It lets people know that, that we see them. Um, and we acknowledge people. The installing of these gender neutral bathrooms are just one of the many ways Manchester is making sure that all students, staff, and teachers feel comfortable here at MHS. From Manchester, this has been Michael Christie reporting. Students and staff here at MHS have been very open to the new ideas presented by our community. The school's faculty has worked hard to make sure everyone feels accepted and I would say we really accomplished a lot this year. And it's important to remember that our accomplishments have not gone unnoticed. Now it's time for the annual tradition we like to call Year in Review, where we recap everything that went down this school year. Take a look. Class of 2018! It's hard to believe that we did all that in just one year. Not only did the school year fly by, but it also feels like yesterday we were walking through these halls for the very first time. I feel the same way. Well, that's all we have for you this year, Manchester. Be sure to tune in next fall for even more coverage on all the exciting things going on around our town. If you have any suggestions for The Pulse, email Mr. Larson at b11elars at mpspride.org or visit us in the communications suite. If you're interested in learning more about The Pulse or to see some of our other projects, visit mhstelevision.com. And don't forget to follow us on Twitter and like us on Facebook at MHS Red Pro. I'm Jake Bola. And I'm Ben Mashinsky. For the very last time, this has been The, the Pulse. Pulse.